It was in vain that Fortunato, uplifting his dull torch, endeavored to pry into the depths of the recess. Its termination, the feeble light, did not enable us to see. So basically, it's so dark that uh, that really, the, again, the, the flambeau, the torches, it's it's just barely glowing. It doesn't see the end. So you, Fortunato can't really even tell that this little room is as small as it is. He can't see the end of it. Proceed, I said. Herein is the Amontillado. As for Lucchesi, he is an ignoramus, interrupted my friend as he stepped unsteadily forward, while I followed immediately at his heels. In an instant, he had reached the extremity of the niche, and finding his progress arrested by the rock, stood stupidly bewildered. So he walks in, he's drunk, he's confused, he's like, oh, I'm going here. A moment more, and I had fettered him to the granite. In its surface were two iron staples, distant from each other, about two feet, horizontally. From one of these depended a short chain, from the other a padlock. Throwing the links about his waist, it was but the work of a few seconds to secure it. He was too much astounded to resist. Withdrawing the key, I stepped back from the recess. So, in that area there, there were some chains. And Fortunato, again, you know, he's really, really drunk. He's got the cold. It's really, really dark. He's very, very confused. And Montresor just takes the chains, chains him up. So, he's stuck uh, down there. Pass your hand, I said, over the wall. You cannot help feeling the nitre. Indeed, it is very damp. Once more, let me implore you to return. No? Then I must positively leave you. But I must first render you all the little attentions in my power. The Amontillado, ejaculated my friend, not yet recovered from his astonishment. True. I replied, the Amontillado. As I said these words, I busied myself among the pile of bones of which I have before spoken. Throwing them aside, I soon uncovered a quantity of building stone and mortar. With these materials, and with the aid of my trowel, I began vigorously to wall up the entrance of the niche. And you could see the picture there to get the idea. I had scarcely laid the first tier of my masonry when I discovered that the intoxication of Fortunato had in a great measure worn off. The earliest indication I had of this was a low moaning cry from the depth of the recess. It was not the cry of a drunken man. There was then a long, obstinate silence. I laid the second tier, and the third, and the fourth, and then I heard the furious vibrations of the chain. The noise lasted for several minutes, during which, that I might hearken to it with more satisfaction, I ceased my labors and sat down upon the bones. When at last the clanking subsided, I resumed the trowel, and finished without interruption the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh tier. The wall was now nearly upon a level with my breast. I again paused, holding the flambeau over the mason work, threw a few feeble rays upon the figure within. A succession of loud and shrill screams, bursting suddenly from the throat of the trained form, seemed to thrust me violently back. For a brief moment I hesitated, I trembled. Unsheathing my rapier, I began to grope with it about the recess, but the thought of an instant reassured me. I placed my hand upon the solid fabric of the catacombs and felt satisfied. I reapproached the wall. I replied to the yells of him who clamored. I re-echoed. I aided. I surpassed them in volume and in strength. I did this, and the clamor grew still. I love this part. It's so messed up. Fortunato is starting to sober up, and so he, you know, starts panicking and he's yelling. And our uh, our, our narrator Montresor just sits back and just, you know, so Fortunato's like ah ah and. Montresor just, ah, ah, just, you know, repeating and mimicking everything uh, that he screams. Uh, there is a movie you may be familiar with. It's uh, before your time, probably, uh, called The Silence of the Lambs. It's an excellent uh, horror film. And there's a scene in it that pays tribute to this idea where the psychotic murderer uh, mimics uh, his victim's screams. 
Let's take a look at that real quick, shall we? It was now midnight. My task was drawing to a close. I had completed the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth tier. I had finished a portion of the last and the eleventh. There remained but a single stone to be fitted and plastered in. I struggled with its weight. I placed it partially in its destined position. But now there came from out the niche a low laugh that erected the hairs upon my head. It was succeeded by a sad voice which I had difficulty in recognizing as that of the noble Fortunato. The voice said, Ha! 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 A very good joke indeed. An excellent jest. We'll have many a rich laugh about it at the Palazzo. <laughs> Over our wine. <laughs> the Amontillado, I said. Yes, the Amontillado. But is it not getting late? Will not they be awaiting us at the Palazzo, the Lady Fortunato and the rest? Let us be gone. Yes, I said. Let us be gone. For the love of God, Montresor! Yes, I said. For the love of God. But to these words I hearkened in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I called aloud. Fortunato? No answer. I called again. Fortunato? No answer still. I thrust a torch through the remaining aperture and let it fall within. There came forth in return only a jingling of the bells. My heart grew sick on account of the dampness of the catacombs. I hastened to make an end of my labor. I forced the last stone into its position. I plastered it up. Against the new masonry, I re-erected the old rampart of bones. For the half of a century, no mortal has disturbed them. In pace, requiescat. Rest in peace. So again, like I said, it's the, this whole thing is a confession. It's been 50 years. That's what good old uh, Fortunato's looking like by now. Anyway, love this story. It's just so messed up. I love the fact that you never know exactly what Fortunato said uh, and how he insulted uh, Montresor. You can easily believe it because, again, he's very condescending toward him. Uh, I like. I, said, I love the fact that he keeps giving him uh, chances to leave, but uh, Fortunato's just so full of himself that uh, he just refuses. Uh, it's just such a well-structured story, just how well uh, planned out, how exacting all this is. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. It's uh, just it's a wonderful uh, short work of horror. Absolutely love this story. And anyway, I, I hope you liked it, too. Uh, it's a good one. Anyway.